Hi everyone, it's Rob at ASFC Chemistry and what I'm going to go through with you today are a couple of points about KC, what it actually means and then how it applies to a weak acid. Now this video is suitable for anyone studying AS or A2 OCR Chemistry Option A. And remember you can send us a tweet at ASFC underscore chemistry if you want to request a specific video or if you have any uh, specific questions to ask me. So. I have pre-prepared this for you. So what I wanted to mention first about what an actual KC is, is that it's just a ratio, it's just products divided by reactants. And you can see I've got square brackets on this and they're to the power of X and Y. Now the reason for that is the brackets represent concentration of. So this is moles divided by volume. If it's a liquid, it's the total volume that the solution is actually in. So it would be, if it's an aqueous solution, for instance, it would be the total volume that that occupies. Or if it was a gas, it would be the complete volume of the container. Because remember, a gas is going to expand to fill that. Now, the X and Y, they refer to the powers of. Now, that means we take the coefficients from any of the products or any of the reactants and make them the power of that term. So if I used, for instance, two moles of HNO3, I would put the HNO3 to the power of two. Then what we've got is what is a weak acid. So a weak acid, remember, is something that dissociates partially or slightly, we can say. Now, that means a weak acid actually has an equilibrium. Because it has an equilibrium, that means we can write it an equilibrium constant Kc. And just with any other Kc, the bigger the value, the more to the right the position of that equilibrium must lie. And so if you get one Ka for a weak acid compared to another weak acid's Ka value, what that means is the one with the larger Ka must dissociate more. Now that makes it a stronger weak acid. If it dissociates more, that makes it better at releasing H plus ions. So some weak acids are stronger than others. But remember, don't get that mixed up with a strong acid. I'm not saying that they are strong acids, just that they dissociate more so, which makes them stronger. What you've also got is a pKa scale associated with weak acids, which is a bit like the pH scale, but you should never get confused between the two. The bigger a Ka, the smaller the pKa you're going to get for that weak acid. So remember, it's the inverse. Just like pH, if you have a really big H plus ion concentration, then you're going to end up with a very small pH, because that's acids, for instance. If you've got a really large amount of H plus, because it is an acid, then it has a low pH value. So anyway, back to the Ka, you can see from what I've written just here, the Ka is really just the equilibrium constant. It just so happens to be that the equilibrium is that of a weak acid. And because weak acids are so common in chemistry, instead of calling them all Kcs, we call them Kas. And what that allows us to do then is rearrange this very easily to get a concentration of H plus ions. So we can merge this topic of Kc with pH by considering that a weak acid has an equilibrium for its own dissociation. Kw is something quite similar to this. Kw is really just a Kc for the dissociation of water. It just doesn't have that bottom part to it. It doesn't have our reactants here because the concentration of H2O in the Kw expression is so large that if we were to have it there, it would make the entire expression completely negligible. We wouldn't bother with it at all. So we make sure we don't put the H2O there. And so it's just got the products part. Plus it's only a very slight equilibrium. Remember that value is one times 10 to the power of minus 14. So that's a really small value for Kw. I hope this clears up what the link is between Kc, Ka, and I suppose Kw as well, because I couldn't help myself, I had to mention that towards the end. If you do have any other questions, anything that you want me to go through, then please drop us a tweet at ASFC underscore chemistry, and I'm happy to let you know about anything to do with A-level chemistry.